welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to Gaming in the Max, and the start of a new series on the channel, Hearts of Iron 4, the Old World Blues Enclave Redux. So, uh, I did, this is uh, two separate mods right now, but um, they tie in together, so we'll click on the West Coast for our faction, and here it is, the Enclave, uh, led by Sergeant Doran as of right now, um, right now we are in charge with the rulers. Uh, we have political infighting, which gains, uh, gives us negative 0.2 political power gain, negative uh, 25% division organization, negative 25% recovery rate, and negative 20% stability. And then uh, we'll have two choices uh, once we get into the game between the purity faction in the Enclave and the reform faction. Um, and we'll show you a little bit more of that when we jump in here. Um, if you guys don't know, uh, I'm a big Fallout nerd, um, but the, I guess nerd is not an acceptable term anymore, but I don't care. Um, the Enclave is the old government of the fallen United States in the Fallout universe. They're the ones that uh, initiated the, the bombs dropping. I think actually they said the lore that China dropped the bombs first, but uh, it was insured, uh, insured destruction. Both sides launched them enough to pretty much eviscerate the entire planet. But these are the remnants of them. They're they're really actually quite horrible people uh, in game and and I mean before the game and everything like that. Um, that they, they have like I said the purity faction and the reform faction. The purity faction is incredibly like if you're not enclave you're not human, <laughs> and you're also not uh, you have no anything no rights no nothing like that. So here. yeah, um, we do start out. They are power armor heavy, so we do start out with four power divisions. And here. one just standard division. Here. We got one general, Major General Grimm. Uh, we'll do Churchill. And Freeman Drummer. There's a lot of reading in this game. Uh, well, in this mod. And uh, especially for the uh, Enclave. Sorry, I'm saying a lot. That's not what I wanted. So, yeah, there's a lot, but I'll try to get through it. We only get two military factories, so we're just going to pump out some laser rifles. Uh, we have, I think, one civilian factory, so... Two, I'm sorry. We have two, so we'll just start building some infrastructure. First and foremost, we have Remember Navarro, uh, the last bastion of freedom. Uh, in the game, at Navarro, um, the NCR meets up with some Enclave remnants and wipes them out with the help of the Brotherhood. Enclave here. Enclave here. So yes, this is the uh, Enclave Redux mod. Uh, it's the most updated version for Old World Blues. Um, Old World Blues also did just get a massive update for these territories up here, up in Canada, uh, which was America, Canada. Uh, the United States did invade Canada in the uh, Fallout lore. So, the last bastion of freedom when the rig was destroyed, the last hopes of America laid at Navarro, and the Brotherhood and the NCR saw it to it that the American dream was to be snuffed out. With many standing on the edge of despair, the toughest soldier of the Enclave, Sergeant Major Dorn, rallied what few troops he could and mustered and uh, fought his way out with power armor, lose 500 manpower, get three divisions of Enclave veterans, um, escaped using vertebrates, got get two flying aces, 100 transports, and 100 gunships. Um, escape before the fighting got bad, which gives us 3,000 manpower and negative 7% uh, uh, war support. And then we barely got out alive, which doesn't give us anything. I, I really like the three divisions, but I'm going to use the escape using vertebrates just for those gunships. Uh, those 100, 100 gunships will hopefully be very useful. Uh, we have old soldiers never die. I guess I could read these as well. Many throughout the fall of Navarro was the end of the Enclave, the end of the American dream. But as with the Great War, the world would uh, discover it is not so easy to defeat America, not by a long shot. Old soldiers never die. Like much of the Enclave, Doran tried to hide and integrate after the fall of Navarro. He took to a disguise in Vault City, became an infamous among those who had threatened the peace and the quiet of Vault City. Thus, until one day, the NCR Rangers arrived. Yeah, so the, uh, the Enclave is absolutely hated by the... Uh, NCR and pretty much everybody to, to be 100% honest with you um, there's two factions like I said you've got this gentleman here and then you have 
uh, let me think real quick. Oh yeah, Granite Sun, and then you have a uh, Doctor Anderson. So there's hard mode. If you guys uh, in this Redux mod really really want to, you can have it like uh, you can see like all of these territories get this hard mode, which they pretty much just get to like be super super strong in the end. But yeah, we're just gonna play as normal. In the lair of the bear, we are on the very border of the NCR, a rogue nation occupying American soul. We cannot deny that they would destroy us if they became fully aware of our existence. Lucky for us, the bear is blind. We can buy bureaucracy and find an ineffectual leader. With the right efforts made, we can hide under the very nose of the NCR until we are strong enough to reveal our plans. But we cannot keep them in the shadows forever. It will become harder and harder to conceal ourselves as the time goes on. Our time will come soon and unlocks the hide activities. Um, so there's decisions in our focus tree that lets us hide from the NCR. The moment the NCR finds us out, they will declare war on us. So you, you have to go um, over here. It says bribe NCR officials. Once I start up, it should allow us to use political power and hide from them. Um, old soldiers never die. For years, Dornan, under the name Chad Ronner, uh, hit among Vault City security. Many within his old unit settled there as well, growing the population considerably. For a time, it was peaceful, though by no means uh, idyllic. Idyllic. Uh, word out of the NCR saw ranges of military police rounding up the former enclave citizens who also tried to integrate. During one caravan security run to Sac City, Dornan watched as a mother and father were hanged for their association with the enclave. Not even the children were spared. It took every ounce of discipline to not open fire right then and there vault city bureaucracy kept the ncr at bay but that was the only for so long then one night there was a knock at the old sergeant's door and he was greeted by the steely eyes of an ncr ranger they had come looking for him and he spoke to and spoke to him by name it was an intense fight but by the end there were two dense the ncr rangers and doran knew his time was up never send morons or so where did i put my power armor we get 75 units of advanced power armor or we get political power and command power uh, I think I can build, let's see, production wise. Yeah, I can build the XO1s. 71's nice. Let's do that. Let's do that political power and command power. Uh, they came for them. They, ca uh, they came for the rest. Oh, yeah, they'll come for the rest. At the height of the Enclave's power, Dornan had the distinct privilege of leading his own unit, something unheard of being he was a non commissioned officer. However, Dornan Rangers. Ranked aside the Devil's Brigade and the Granite Company in terms of effectiveness. When Navarro fell, they of course rallied behind the most feared and respected man in the Enclave. Yet as time worn on and the dream of American flickered out, they moved on, though many settled in Vault City. When Dornan arrived at the house of his second in command, fist bloodied from the encounter, they all knew they were no longer safe. The two went door to door, knowing the hour was coming. That night saw an exodus. Dornan, during his last act as Chad Rayner, to get them through. They made their way to an abandoned pre-war base off near New Reno. It was long abandoned, but few actually knew its exact location. But Dornan did, as the members settled in the pre-war bases. Only one thing was on their mind. They were ready for revenge. Give us 1,000 manpower, plus 5 war support, plus 5 facility. Or they wanted a future for their kids. Uh, gain 1,000 manpower and 50 political power. Um, our stability's trash, and our war support's trash. So, let's try to get them up as best we can to get that revenge. Uh, a son, a sons and Daughters of Liberty, the veterans of the Enclave are old, aging, yet there's a new generation of Enclave who are ready to take up the flag and defend America. But yeah, so like, uh, the Enclave and the American government at the time was very, very, uh, uh pretty bad. Um, the Vault Tech, all of the vaults, were actually a big social experiment that the uh, government was doing. So some, like, had only, like, one vault had only females, one vault had only men, uh, and vice versa. like there was there was all these tests that were doing going on uh, at this time the enclave has of course there's super mutants on the map and everything uh, super mutants are a uh, a test that went wrong by the united states military and the enclave where they were trying to build super soldiers but instead with the fev the uh, forced evolutionary virus uh, they just forced people in to turn into super mutants uh, a new generation of America's governments. Times, however, had marched on. Dorn cropped black hair had turned sol uh, solver white, and even his best officers grew weary with age. Yet among their numbers were not a series of old enclave, but a new generation sired by the enclave of old. Many were taught the basics of survivals. Others taught how to be soldiers. Many of the old ones were taught tonight were rangers, and they had taught their children well. They had come of the age being taught of the enclave of America and their heritage. Dorn thought back to the child hanging beside his parents, then looked to the families huddling around the center of the depot. Even if you said the Enclave was dead or the American Dream was gone, they weren't going to give up, not this time. They're the Enclave's future. 
or they for they are America's future. Uh, we are going to go as the intellectuals with the reformers. So we will do for they are America's future. Give us some more uh, support for the reformers. We'll do calling on the enclave. Some of our other national spirits are enclave scientists plus ten percent research speed and plus uh, zero point or point zero five. Uh, daily elite support, uh, power armor expertise plus 50 special forces capacity um, plus 20% fuel gain, uh, cell gain per f energy and um, energy cell capacity plus 50%. Uh, complete chaos, cannot train, disband, or edit units, and then protected by the Syria Army Depot, surrender limit plus 100%. Uh, we got Sarah, the Sierra Enclave. Using old codes and working endlessly to get the radio running, the refugees from Vault City began broadcasting from afar. The encrypted channel would be hidden from prying ears like the NCR and secured from those who knew how, like the Brotherhood, soon others began arriving from the south, uh, the east, and even a few out of California. In a month, a series of vertebrates arrived, having come from Bloomfield Space Center in California. Among them was Franklin Anderson, a well-respected scientist in his time and a brilliant orator who managed to rally many within the depot to the old purest cause. Well, there's chaffed under the words no one argued it played to the Enclave's desire for revenge. Not long after, a separate group arrived from Oregon, a famous mercenary warband known as Granite Company, who historically was one of the greatest units in the Enclave. While Granite Sr. passed away not long ago, his son, Douglas Granite, had taken over, and where Anderson made fiery rhetorics of revenge for the purity of America, Granite made impassioned speeches to counter talking about reform and of a new beginning. Night after night, this continued and soon came to head when it was suggested that the depot hold a vote. Either uh, we have a, sci a science politician and a mercenary war hero. Interesting. Or things certainly got busy around here. Plus 25 political power. Uh, I'm going to go with the command power. Although political power is nice. Here's our hide from the NCR. So like when you're taking territories and stuff. The cost uh, for the um, political power will go up. The more that you uh, show yourself. So we're just going to do it now. Where it's cheap. It was only 20. Um, there's a couple of guys that we can actually choose uh, if we so wanted to right now. Uh, I don't see anybody that I really like. Maybe the construction speed guy. There's a reformer. He hurts our war support, but he helps with the intellectual support. Problem is. They have so much going towards them. Uh, we'll just wait. We'll hold off for right now. Van Graffs want lower tariffs. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, never let the old flag fall. Despite all that's happened in the last few months, the Enclave remnants are scattered far and across America's continent, from MacArthur to Chicago to possibly even Texas and beyond. Norton came to Severa Depot for a reason to create a stable base for more from prying eyes and prepare for the future. Now, with what he has, what the Anderson and Granite have, they can accomplish just that. It'll be hard, difficult, but that never stopped America before. America will rise. America will go on. The rig may have gone down and the family's hunted like rats in sewers, but the wasteland should learn it's not so easy to take out America like that. Not by a long shot. Let's spread the word. Uh, we gain 100 political power, but we get 50 transports and 50 gunships. Or, uh, God bless America, Enclave survivors from past expeditions from afar will join. That's 100 political power, and we get uh, Coyote Kelly becomes a unit leader. Uh, I'm going to do that instead of the uh, same amount of political power, but we already got 100 of the transports and gunships. This gives us straight units. So now we have... Four more units. This is Enclave Maincom. And we'll have you guys train for right now. Uh, let's do Better Call Saul. That's 250 political power. It's a little, little, just a little steep. A little steep. Uh, Harold Richardson, the son of the... Old the president it gives you stability. Let's do him. Um, so yeah, there was a rig off the coast of California that was a uh, 
old oil rig where the old enclave government was stationed out of and uh the ncr figured out or i guess it wasn't the ncr it was like the lone hero uh from arroyo this was in the one of the other i think it was like the first game the chosen one uh and they go out and they blow up the rig and defeat the enclave And I know some of you that are fans of the Fallout series and Fallout will be like, you're wrong, this is what actually happened. Uh, if I am, please correct me in the comments. Uh, and with the start of the new Fallout series on Amazon, I thought we would play this mod. So, our old allies, before the rig's destruction, we contacted with one of the new Reno crime families, the Salvatores, trading drugs for weapons. While it was a time honored tradition, the family has been kicked out of New Reno due to their plot being uncovered. Even plasma rifles can't stop a mob of angry thugs and mob enforcers. They've been living on their new Reno outskirts while the Salvatores themselves have headed north to outrun Mr. Bishop. Uh, many of those he once employed are now desperate for protection, and we can use that to our advantage, bolstering our numbers and diverting the more scientifically minded ones to work on lesser projects, freeing up our best for more important research. Re, uh, research. So we can bring them in and muzzle them. We gain 200 manpower, one research slot, and the NCR suspicion goes down by 20 or disrupt them among the teams and keep them under guards. We get 200 manpower, research speed plus 2%, and the suspicion will go down as well. Uh, I'm going to take the research slot, 100%. That's a way better deal in my opinion. Uh, we'll do forget about the past, gain more stability, adds military heritage, boost our power armor cap, and we get support combat. Uh, do the other control armor. So if you're a fan of the uh, Fallout games and you're like, oh yeah, the Enclave. Enclave here. The Enclave were the ones in Fallout 3 in the old wasteland of the uh, capital that wanted to put the, uh, the virus in the water and kill everybody off. So, there is that. And this, this mod is fun. Uh, I don't play it enough, which is a shame on me, but uh, we do got military heritage. We'll do our choice, and I think how you look at that. I don't remember. I'm going to have to remember how to check where you can find those technologies. I think it's in research, actually. This is cybernetics. That's not what we're, this is it. Right here. Origins. Unlock access to military heritage technology located in the top right of the infantry technology window. Oh, right here. Past victories, more organization, reinforcement rate. And then at the end, uh, reorgan uh, more soft attack and division organization. So. Yeah, right now we're using the X-01 power armor. There's a lot of power armor you can uh, go up to. So there's password dudes there. So our choice. Uh, so this is when you get to decide between the uh, purist and the, the reformers. Sergeant Dornan is well respected by both the the reformer and purist factions within the Enclave. Nonetheless, neither see him as a viable president and have presented their own candidates. The purists have selected Franklin Anderson as their candidate, while the reformers are led by Douglas Granite. It appears the purist faction has the advantage, but the support of the Sarge could tip the scales in favor of the reformers. Uh, Sergeant Dorn supports Douglas Granite. Dorn decides Dr. Anderson is a moron. Uh, Douglas Granite of the reformer faction to become the new enclave president. Yeah, I'm not going to go down the bloodthirsty uh, barbarian path of uh, Mr. Anderson there. So now we're doing our president. Uh, we have made our choice, and that choice will change the future of the enclave and if we are a successful America, but who really is the man we elected? Let's go into a little bit of backstory about uh, Mr. Granite here. We can move away from the Navarro veterans. Which uh, hurts the daily support quite a bit. Uh, 
we're gonna go. I hate to waste it, but we'll do Enclave Academy instead. So that should start to see the purest. Not yeah. Um, since the father granted its past, his controversial subjects are missed made all the more contested by rumors spread by the peers. The cause of is Granite's father had relationships with the Chosen One. The peers accused Granite's father of the treason for aiding the Chosen One and destroying the oil rig, but lack any evidence. Despite the fact that he will deny these allegations and nothing but political slander, Douglas remembers clearly what his father told him about the fateful day on the oil rig. He hated the Chosen One and went their separate ways. Speaking of the Chosen One, let me tell you who your mother... Oh, I can't say that. <laughs> and then he didn't aid the Chosen One, which gets the event Douglas Youth. Uh, more war support, more stability. Now, this one's kind of interesting. We get Mutant Sympathies, which gives us non-core manpower plus 2%, uh, which I, I actually like that one, just because uh, at some point we'll be taking land that I don't think we can fully core. And uh, if we don't, then we'll be all right. Well, maybe. Yeah. The stability and war support's nice. Yeah, we'll do this one. That's okay. Uh, Douglas's youth. After traveling around with his son for a brief few years, Granite Senior established contact with one of the Enclave civilian vaults set up as a contingency to repopulate the American mainland after the Enclave government cleansed it. Since President Dick Richards had left uh, or had lifted child rearing restrictions, the po vault's population had exploded. Nonetheless, it was a safer place for a child than the wasteland. Thus, Douglas spent most of the youth in the safety of the vaults. Like most children in the Enclave vaults, Granite was raised with a fervent hatred of communism. Sadly, 200 years of Enclave propaganda and living in a vault ran under a command economy meant that he and most other members of the Enclave were left with a vague misunderstanding of what communism was. As such, Granite knew all enemies of America must be communists. We gain anti-communists, which is war support plus 5%. Uh, Granite's hatred of communism will play a role in the future events and, if necessary, to unlock anti-communist propaganda or spent history class playing on his pit boy Gained 5% stability. Nope, we'll do anti-communist. And then Douglas's first contact... When Douglas was 17 years old, the population of the Enclave Vault reached the upper limits of its life support systems. As a result, a large portion of the healthy and strong were ordered to leave the safety of the vault to establish contact with the largest group of Enclave remnants, led by an old Navarro drill sergeant. Douglas, however, was quick to contact with his father's granite company, instead slipping away from the rest unseen. His father welcomed him back, giving him a promotion with or position within the company where he quickly rose to the ranks. When Douglas was a lieutenant of the Granite Defense Company, he received an emergency distress signal the message sounded desperate and came from an NCR battalion fighting ra rangers or raiders, a Brotherhood Knight containing a peri war threat, or Kaisar scouts seeking new lands. Uh, uh, let's do a Brotherhood Knight. Douglas's decision. When Douglas arrived with his team, the situation of the defenders had grown more dire. Their battered defenses crumbling quickly in a determined but almost equally bloodied raider gang. Looking over the sad state of both parties, Douglas decided to wipe them out. At least they reveal the Enclave's survival, which uh, Granite gains ruthless. Just for wartime, negative 10%. Resistance target at negative 5%. Manpower plus 200. Or help take down the Rangers, which gives them Charismatic, which is improved relations opinion plus 20%. Daily compliance, compliance gain plus 0.10%. Uh, and we will give us a connection with this faction's ads. Friends of the Brotherhood, which grants research speed plus 3%. Uh, let's say he helped take down the Raiders. And then Granite's Exodus. The Granite Company was famous on the West Coast, having conducted the operations from Seattle to the Rio and everywhere in between. When Granite took over, their base of operation was uh, Arcata, the mercenary capital of Northern California. Granite always felt at home there and never knew why. If things had played out differently, he'd still be there. However, with the encroachment of the NCR and the Navarro territories, suspicion was being raised against the Granite Company outfit. Just where did they get their power armor and training? When the signal from the Sierra Armor Depot was intercepted, thanks to a decoder device sold to them, from some crazy caravan merchant, he and Granite Company made the trek to Nevada. Before they left, they made sure to savage as many weapons as possible. We gained 15 of the Winchester plasma rifles, 10 gauze rifles, 64 common weaponry, and 56 common energy weaponry. Or we bought along friends and family, which gives us uh, 300 manpower and 5% uh, popul uh, popularity of intellectuals. That percentage could really help us. They, there's only 100 guns there. A little bit more than 100 guns, I should say. Uh, I like the Winchester plasma rifles and the Gauss cannons, but we do lose them to attrition during wars. So let's let's get that manpower and the intellectual. We'll do reform, which is a 20-day focus. And we get uh, Enclave uh, 
efficiency with special forces capacity multiplier plus 15 percent we are to rebuild our once great nation we must reform ourselves and our principles sadly many of the reformist elements have already deserted in the last few years they've been mostly devoted and the fanatical we will have to tread carefully in our efforts to reform the enclave into an organization fit to restore order justice and democracy to these united states i am going to take a drink of my water so if you guys hear my water on the uh the uh microphone it's just me drinking water because this is a lot of reading ah delicious well let's see let's click in here we're gonna get one of these gunship fleets out first light bombard group I'll have you guys pilot exercise so you're not rookies and we'll give you Mr. Avenger Dallas Avenger Iverson About done with the reforms. All right, a lament for reform. Uh, the reform reformer faction in the Enclave have never had it easy. First and foremost, many of their better natures often led them to desert the Enclave the first chance they got, or to do whatever they could to resist the terrible actions they were forced to commit. What more? Those who remained often had to keep their heads down due to the machinations of President Richardson. How his hubris bit him hard in the end, with the many reformers banished to the mainland, making up many of the survivors, while the hardline leadership went down with the rig. However, both are at odds for the future of the Enclave. The young generation, having grown up outside the insular culture of the rig, have a more open view of the world around them, natured or nurtured, of course, by their parents. However, many are beholden to their parents and are unsure of their future, given they were forced to flee their homes for no crime aside being alive. As Granite addressed the assembly, he could feel the uncertainty within the room. Today, today is the beginning of a new era. And many of you entrusted that to me. Among the series of events in my life, nothing can fill me with the greater anxiety than what you have given me today. On the one hand, I was summoned by my country, I attest I barely know, whose voice I could never hear until now. My fellow Americans, I hear you. I am but your humble servant. I will put down my Gatlin laser and take up the oath of office you good people have all seen to hand me. We shall enter this new world with fire in our eyes and pride in our hearts. Now we can do God bless the Enclave its people and its future plus 200 political power or may it never be forgotten uh, and god bless america which gives us 200 command power uh, we're gonna go with the political power. so there's a legit legitimacy to, uh, fa uh i don't know what you'd call it anyway there's a legitimacy mechanic in the game there we go Ooh, my brain just like you could you could feel the smoke coming off my ears uh, anyway, for the first time in centuries, our authority has extended beyond core Enclave members. Considering our previous interactions with these newfound citizens could easily be misinterpreted as attempted genocide, proving ourselves a legitimate government will take time and effort. Certain choices we'll make, uh, we make will increase our, or decrease our legitimacy. Higher legitimacy comes with the bonuses to our rule and allows for new choices in our focus tree. Low legitimacy will come with penalties, at least until we find a way to keep the voice on our floor regardless of their opinions. You'll notice that the negative effects of our low legitimacy are currently very weak. The effects of legitimacy become more severe as our population expands beyond our core Enclave members. We'll keep that in mind. Gain 5% legitimacy, or the Enclave will tell them what to think. Gain more war support, political power, but we already lose legitimacy. Nope, we'll keep that in mind. We're now at 5% legitimacy. Uh, doesn't hurt us right now, but it will at a later time. So, here's our focus tree. Uh, it's pretty chunky pretty nice um, the first thing we will do is the presidential speech we can uh, increase the intellectuals here and here Gives us 25 army experience, change in popularity of intellectuals by 5%, and then gave a speech which gave us 3%. So now we're at 55%. The reason why you need uh, your um, 
intellectuals higher is you actually when you're doing this side of the focus tree the purge the opposition um you have to have more control in the uh in the factions to do any part of it and if you go below it it actually is really hard to come around from that so Traders among our scientists in the meeting room in the Sierra Army Depot. Dr. Anderson was giving a speech to the science of the depot. Many of the scientists were involved in the FEV experiments, including the infamous FEV curling 13. It is no surprise that they lean overwhelmingly purist. And Anderson was preaching to the choir. My fellow scientists, Anderson said, we have suffered too much at the hands of the mutants. We have been unjustly persecuted for only performing our research. Our research was meant to save America, but the mutants think otherwise. They blew up the rig and sacked Navarro, nearly killing the American dream. Countless cloud leagues have died by their hands. Even worse to this day, they hunt us down over fabricated crimes. Crocodile tears fell from Anderson's eyes. I myself was a member of the Chemical Corps. I lost many good friends when the rig was destroyed. I feel the pain all you experience, and I'll never forgive the mutants. The fool who calls himself president would make peace with those mutants, make peace with the monsters responsible for our suffering. This is completely unacceptable. The president must be removed from the office for all our dead colleagues for America. He was met with a thunderous surprise. Replaces enclave scientists with treasurers, uh, uh, scientists. Uh, effective change, stability negative five percent, research speed negative five percent, and daily elite support plus point zero five. And then traders in the officer corps. What do you mean we can't sack those traders? Shouted Granite. Granite never experienced traitorous, treasonous officers before, having always relied on his charisma to keep testers in line. Unfortunately, the enclave officer was corps was dominated by purists who see Granite as an illegitimate president. Now his own subordinates were subordinating orders and even scheming among themselves to replace their commander-in-chief. Colonel Stevenson sighed, believe me, I want those bastards out of the officer corps too, but right now the officer corps is dominated by purist or purist sympathizers. If we launch a PERS, it will most certainly trigger a coup. Grant had no experience with the situation. What do you suggest instead? Uh, we play the long game, Colonel Stevenson replied, promoting pro-reformists to officer position, convincing the fence-sitters and even a few training accidents when the purists are weak enough, we strike. Well, and one more thing countered, Colonel Stevens, I suggest you should quickly lock the door to your corners. Uh, we will have to deal with them later. We replace enclave officers with treacherous officers. Uh, military leaders cost plus 50%. Starting level of new army leaders, negative 1. Negative 5% stability. Negative 50% max planning. Uh, starting attack, logistics, and planning skills for leaders is negative 1. And daily elite support, 0 0.05. Yes, so not only are the uh, officers not loyal but nor are the scientists, which I think are somewhere in here. We can jump, we can jump up from disorganized regiments to reorganize remnants. We won't do that yet. Let's keep on going. So yeah, see now they're at a daily change of plus 10 for the purest faction. That's why it's super important to uh, get your intellectual as high as you can. Chaos in the Navarro territories. So you got the Free Folk, the Navarro territories, and the Fushang. Justify a crackdown on them. Many of the most devoted purists are on edge, feeling control of the Enclave's destiny slipping between their fingers. They are eager to abandon uh, words in favor of actions. Too eager, in fact, this could be exploited. We're going to kill them off and throw them somewhere. Let's get... Entrenchment speed and circlement penalty... Or straight up 10 15 percent attack. Let's do him, uh, her. The best, uh, the best defense is a good offense. So we're gonna range disappearances. It takes three percent stability. It probably won't do that. Get that researching. What's that say? Oh, wild promises. Yeah. Urban power armor demands tribute. Who the den will not be pushed around. How dare they start 
searching our uh, refined warfare. Secret stolen. Last night, a small group of traders made off with a vertebrate in almost all of our military codes. Their communications suggest they were opportunists who saw a better future in selling the codes than wherever the enclave is headed. Regardless of the intentions of the betrayal, the betrayal is a sphere below many old military bases, including the heavy, heavily fortified lower levels of the CR Army Depot, are now forever lost to us. We can't get rid of so we don't need them. Gain 25 political power or blame the peers. We gain the justification for a crackdown. We'll do that. And then the exploitation for technology. The heads of the Vancouver Mavins were uh, asked to sponsor a scavenging party into a ruined facility uh, nearby. They think this is a large trove of old world equipment that would allow them to develop new processes and maintain an edge on the market. In return for sponsorship, they will share the knowledge gained to us. Uh, though there is a chance our party is deterred or worse by fits, but Facility defenses, our current equipment could be up to the challenge. Ah, yeah, sorry, we don't have the manpower for that. I thought I had stream remote, I shouldn't have got that notification in the corner. That was my bad, but that happened. So. I'll stop training you guys up. First people that we will be fighting are these gentlemen here. Here. Oh, there's the treacherous scientist right there. We should have a crackdown. Yeah, so the crackdown uh, with combinations of demotions and banishments and outright executions, we can openly get rid of the worst traitors among us at the cost of internal stability and our conscience. Uh, we lose 50, 50 manpower. 5% uh, stability. Uh, the popularity of elites is negative 5%. Mary Owich from Sierra Enclave will be executed on charges. Let's purge them once. Just get the, uh, not the bicycle, the convoy equipment. Can recruit some enclave ex uh, auxiliaries. Let's provoke the purists. Scroll up here to the top. We'll consolidate power. Gives us some more stability. And the purist popularity is at 24%. I think they have to be at like 10% or something. 15%. But we can uh, purge the scientists and purge the officers here. Which it does like murder our stability. But hopefully at some point we can pull out of it. The remnants wish to return. So we've been contacted with the leader of a sizable company of enclave remnants. They have survived decades as writers. Uh, greatly feared due to their advanced tactics and technology. Having heard rumors of the return of the Enclave, they're asked to be reinstated into our armed forces. With extra manpower would be very useful. Their disdain for the meat and travel, that of Anderson and his ilk, we therefore, or we must therefore consider the political consequences of accepting them into our ranks. The prodigal sons have returned. The remnants are accepted as a new division and quickly join the purists. Uh, change popularity of elites plus 8%. We gain one veteran and two veteran auxiliaries. Or enclave, no enclave here. The remnants are sent away, no doubt, working out their frustration and the sentiment they come across. Game based stability, negative five percent. Uh, I hate to actually increase the elitists and get these kind of bad units, but I also hate in my mind to think that I sent these people away and then they just go and like murder a bunch of people. So we'll allow them to come. Uh, promotion recently, a promo uh, commander position has opened up. There are two available candidates eligible for promotion: an older, experienced Navarro veteran and a young, outspoken reformer. Uh, let's let's get Chris Hamilton for that intellectual. So it kind of it didn't completely balance itself out, but we did get uh, it was only three percent. So it was pretty much one percent uh, faction support per unit, which isn't that bad. Let's get dogs researched. 
make our power armor better. Do the bicycles. Can you imagine going out there and there's a dude in full body armor looking like this full full metal robot suit and he's just like pedaling on a like a little street bike you know bicycle shooting a laser rifle at you like the jokes couldn't make themselves on that one there's consolidating power grant's minds raced as he walked towards the podium he never knew politics could be uh, as stressful as combat perhaps politics was even worse than combat since the enemy soldier does not smile at you only to stab you you later step uh, back stab you later this time, Granite wondered if he was out of his league. Granite quickly brushed away the thought he had a duty to carry out. Tensions have been high since the elections. Support for the peers has only intensified as a result, especially in the upper echelons of the government. To address this situation, Boris T. suggests you hold a town hall session with all the, uh, those with grievances towards the new U.S. government. Now they were all in one room, awaiting answers from the new president. Granite looked at the crowd before him. Many appeared to be disdainful of the new president. The most obvious course of action would be given the speech he and Boris T. had meticulously crafted and repeated it repeatedly revised over the past few weeks, attempted to bring them over to the reformist cause. However, a more ruthless president might have grown tired of playing politics with these rats and may consider the M enemy combatants instead. Someone hand me my speech. Uh, political power gain plus, or yeah, political power plus 50, 50 and change popularity of intellectual plus 5%. Or, my fellow Americans, we gain 100 political power, change popularity of intellectual plus 10% uh, available because you are charismatic, my fellow Americans. We'll do that one. It should push intellectuals at 66% now. Gave us 141 political power. Uh, let's purge the scientists. Hurts our manpower, hurts our stability, but it gets rid of the treacherous scientists. And Benjamin, oh. We have to demote them first. I got you. So we'll demote them first. And all that does is Major Grimm or I'm sorry this one change popularity of elites negative 8% we get negative 20% research speed and uh, modifies the treacherous scientists by research speed negative 2% and daily support for elites negative 0.05 so we'll do that first it's 200 days we'll purge the scientists Ooh, wait we lose 10% there they cancel for right now Major General will also perish. Try to get that political power up. Then we can do the purest officers, which kills the elites uh, as well. And with that, we get our division organization and division attack. Division organization negative 25% and attack negative 10%. But when we do the purge to scientists, we only lose 5% stability. So that's way better to hold, uh, handle than 10 to 20%. So we'll purge the scientists. We'll purge the officers, and then hopefully we can assassinate Mr. Anderson. This is Enclave Maincom. And then we're going to have to figure out somebody to take over for Mr. General Grimm. I'd say we'll figure somebody out. Promote somebody up. It says he's uh, executed on false charges. I'm not going to say they're false charges. Uh, they got executed for being horrible human beings. So. Purge out the scientists. Sadly, the stability loss is ever increasing. So. All these wars are going on. Uh, the legend of General James Song. The guards outside of Sierra Armor Depot were quite surprised today when a man in strange power armor arrived at the gate dragging an Elf Delph Claw. Of course, they fired at him, but the rounds bounced off, bounced off his armor and didn't even phase the man before he presented a set of cred uh, cred credentials identifying him as an Enclave officer. Checking what few records we have, we've identified him as none other than General James Song, who was last seen commanding the defense of Navarro against the compliance assaults of both the NCR and the Brotherhood. While Sergeant Major Dornan may have led the retreat that led to the Enclave's survival, General Song led the diversion that saved the dreams of the Enclave. We thought for sure he had died, but no, he had been captured by the NCR, broke out of their prison, recovered his armor from the Brotherhood, heard the rumors of us here in the depot, killed an alpha male Deathclaw along the way, dragged all the way here to give our soldiers food to eat, and is now reporting for duty. 
Welcome back. General James Song becomes a unit leader. That man is insane. Enclave here. Yeah, insane. Skill six. I'm thinking about promoting him when uh, Mr. Grimm dies. Just promote him straight up. Be like, congratulations. See, now our, our hide from the uh, NCR is only 10 political power, so we're going to do that. March. About done with purging the scientists. All right, we purge the scientists. We'll purge the officer corps now. Major General Grimm will be executed. We'll lose quite a bit of stability, but it'll be okay in the end. And then we should it should be low enough that we can completely get rid of them. The Phoenix Republic rose up against the Kaiser's Legion. Her Harvey Thompson. It's old Kaiser. Oh yeah, everybody in the country hates us except for MacArthur, which is an enclave detachment. Security chief selected in Vault City. Let's see, what can we do? Maybe some dynamite sticks. Yeah, see, if we look. Right, like. Because uh, it's factions, it's not what I want. Anyway, if we come up to MacArthur. See everybody that hates him. We click on ourselves. The whole world hates us except for MacArthur. <laughs> but again, they are uh, not really our friends, but they are Enclave remnants. Have you guys stopped training? See the little bird bird flying around. Our purge the officers. Hopefully, we'll be done here soon. Uh, Major General Grimm speaks out in favor of Anderson. During a heated argument in the officers' mess hall today, Major General Grimm has spoken, has loudly spoken out in favor of Franklin Anderson and his ideas about the Enclave future. A future's words were aimed at both the mutants of the NCR and President Granite. While the officers in question may be a capable leader in the field, we should note the op opinions of the commanders we appoint to lead. What they say in the mess hall and over the radio will always affect their loyal soldiers. They are entitled to their opinion. Gain base war support plus 3% or change in popularity of intellectual negative 5% or speak to him personally. We've got three options that will happen. There's a 40% chance that Major Jim, Major Grimm will lose his purest thoughts. Um, he becomes a reformer or there's a 30% chance uh, there's a change in popularity of intellectual negative 10%, and that's the he becomes unconvinced. Uh, we're going to do that. Hopefully we roll good dice. He's converted. All right. Expecting some sort of reprisal from the recent comments, Major General Grimm was surprised to be invited to the president's personal bunker suite for dinner instead. After a lengthy conversation over roasted death, claw, and scotch, it appears that Major General Grimm has come to see things in a different light. After a discussion that lasted deep in the night, the commander left satisfied. And with a new perspective on what it meant to be an American, it appears the reformers have gained a staunch supporter in the night. Lincoln would be proud. Major General Grimm becomes a reformer. Perfect. Enclave here. So I'm actually going to take Shadow Jack, and we're going to change him over to General James. So now we don't have to kill off the general. We just have to remove some of the other officers. Sorry to get me a little drink of water there. We'll purge the officers, and I, I believe we'll be able to purge Mr. Anderson there. Then finish out, purge the opposition, and... Probably do the American Dream. Let's purge the officers. Let's get rid of Dr. Anderson and his vile thoughts. We lose 10% stability, uh, change popularity of elites, negative 20%, and 
And then there's the event attempted purge of Franklin Anderson. No attempted about it. Then once that's over, we can go over to the crime city and knock out uh, good old Reno. We can also start doing the infiltrate the NCR. And once we get uh, the American Dream, we can start rebuilding the uh, Sierra Nevada Depot. So. Fortress Sierra. Who's in charge over here? Christopher Wright, the intellectual. Yeah, because I don't think the... Uh, I don't know what I was going to finish there. <laughs> finish that one infrastructure Just keep going so we'll start researching air even though we can actually already produce the transports we can hold a small speech but not right now Form. I like the armor reform. Research dogs. Let's research the saw. The makeshift saw. My apologies. All right. The attempted purge of Franklin Anderson. The good doctor has been a thorn in our side ever since his loss in the election. His connections and wit have kept him alive up until now, stubbornly leading his few remaining followers. Up until last minute, Anderson stayed put. At his post in the Sierra Army Depot, filling his administrative duties out on this terminal. It was to our great surprise that we found his office empty, as if he left in a great hurry. A Vertiberg, a small group of personnel, some known to be his followers, and some power armor, power armor also disappeared around the same time. Anderson's terminal has been wiped clean, but analyzing pat net, past network traffic revealed it was pinging potential enclave outposts in the east using expired presidential authentication codes, which are monitoring and drops since they automatically failed authentication. This has been rectified, but rest assured our current remaining presidential authentication codes have never been compromised, and Anderson will be rejected by any remaining Enclave systems. Regardless, Anderson and his most loyal followers are gone and will no longer be a problem for this foreseeable future. Clever man, but he knows that he lost. Then we can purge the opposition, removes uh, infighting, which is 60 days, which is a little bit long. See production. We're trying to build up some of these rifles just very slowly. We've got a lot of stuff to build. Enclave here. Then we will fight New Luna. Once we purge the enemy. Warden declared war on the hand dogs. Let's see, right there. I wish Warden was stronger because it actually is really fun to play as Warden. Right, just right there. Hello, America. And then Robot City is really fun too with Doki Doki. Which is like a Japanese love game. Everybody over here is at war. You guys ain't at war yet. Knights of, uh, of the competitive government of Stoon under the Grand Master of the Order of St. George. Rosewood, the Glory of Chase. Where's the communist up here? Right there, Strathcoon, Strath Commune. The face of the Canadian People's Front. Uh, the free folk look like they're losing. And the Fu 
you saying with like they're somewhat losing as well? Pierce popu popularity of the Pierce to zero, so we will get uh, we'll get rid of that political infighting, so we gain back our political power gain, division organization recovery, and we gain twenty percent stability, which is worth it. And there's no Pierce faction anymore. Then of course we can do the uh, American Dream, which is forty days. We don't have the mutant question just yet, so we gotta do some more. A fist fight breaks out. A heated argument turned violent in the general staff cafeteria today. Unsurprised that the topic of the argument was the recent elections. Though many claim that he was provoked, none deny that the person supporting the reformer caused through the first punch. This normally insufficient issue is gathering a lot of attention. We have been asked to intervene, an ungrateful position to be in since defending the aggressor would reflect badly on us, but condemning him would also come across as a stab in the back to the more zealous reformers. Pierce had it coming, both share the blame, or there's no excuse for striking a fellow officer. No, they both they both deserve it. I like that, but I don't want to lose that so much stability. Only got uh, 15 more days now. I'll get rid of our purest thinkers, which, uh, he's one. Uh, there's another one. He's one. No. He's one right there. Rabid purest. Oh, Colonel T.M. Wilkins. He'll be gone. Seven more days. Very little. Very little power armor. Or very little manpower. Manpower armor. Let me see. Can we get the gunships? No. No, we cannot. There's Purge of the Opposition done. Let's do crime, the city of crime, and gain annex war against them. Into the blizzard, while most of the remaining purists were either executed, had accidents, or simply packed up and disappeared while they had had their still a chance, one particularly numerous group appropriated a few vertebrates that headed north far beyond our radar covers. One can only guess what they choose such a bizarre direction. They'll probably freeze to death anyway. Enclave defectors flock to the Legion. Although we took power with promise to not purge our political enemies, like most politicians, we've fallen short of our promises. While some purists fled east to uh, Chicago or Raven Rock, some Enclave loyalists who like Wasteland or Americans personally, but doubt our cause have sold their services to the Legion. The bastards took some suits of power armor, plasma guns, and our last supply of FEV on their way out. Apparently, Khazar intended to use them to bring the torch of knowledges, or the torch of knowledge to the waste in a rather literal fashion. So. Kaiser's Legion gains Enclave Advisors. Wait, why did they take the FEV? Uh, which grants infantry soft attack plus 5%, division speed plus 5%, division attrition negative 10%, and division attack plus 5%. And the anti integration faction appears are no more, but that does not mean that every member of the Reformer faction is an unconditional lover of Wastelanders. Many hold the opinion that while there are certainly no peers, the Wastelanders should have be kept at a, ar a safe arm's length from the peers stock human Humans of the Enclave, for them, they can be no integration, only ruling from of one class by their genetic betters. Many ex peers and reformer moderates have gone over to this new faction in the government. How should we approach this new divide? The elite's party will now be called the anti-integration policy. Valuable point of view, this new faction will allow to absorb the remaining peers to moderates and discuss their ideas openly, easy intentions, or two steps forward, one step back. Lose a bunch of stability. Uh, refuse to acknowledge this new faction as anything but peers with extra steps. Gain base stability negative 10%, and there's only a change in popularity for elitism 15. Mm. 
And that's for the elites. Ugh. That's easing tensions. But, yeah, when not you just fight these type of people? I don't know which is the better choice here. Like, I hate to lose all that stability. But I also hate to lose 25% of my political power. Or my, my... Yeah, we'll just do two steps forward, one step back. I'll lose the stability. I think Granite is mad enough to say no. We got 52 days left on that purest officers. Ah, uh, we'll, we'll be able to defeat New Reno with that. Big grass, and there goes the war up in Canada. Uh, vertebrates have an amazing range. Shoot. One of you guys just bomb the tar out of everybody. Now, production wise, when we take these factories, I want support equipment, anti tank, power armor, convoys, recon. Mongols. Security Let's So we should get quite a few factories from New Reno. And they went down the Salvatore's Legacy, maybe? No, not you guys. Uh, who is it? The family, yeah. All right. Let's see. We have to fight them now. All right, perfect. Declare war. Enclave declares war. Oh, yeah. Infiltrate the NCR. push Our power armor's just bashing through them Enclave here Enclave here Got these guys. Boop, boop. There we go. And there goes the arena. Take all their territories. Confirm. Beautiful. Enclave here. Put you guys against the vipers. They're the biggest of the enemies to our right. Demand tribute. No. I'll break you all. Break them. Let's do Enclave Radio real quick. Yeah, New Reno's been disabled. So we're not getting any money from it, which is fine for right now. 
20 days on that. We'll get Enclave Radio done, then we'll jump up and do uh, Checkmate so we can get down to the new capital. So then we can do this one. So there's the federal budget. To conquer a new arena, the Enclave must now deal with something that, that has put off for two centuries, a federal budget. No, nothing is certain in life but death and taxes. Replaces no currency with bottle caps. Uh, modifies motivated by vengeance with standard wages. Which effective change, negative 15% army experience gain, negative 5% recruitable population factor, negative 5% consumer goods, and negative 10% max training. And then Thrad defects the Troll Warren. The Sierra Enclave Liberation of New Reno has chased much of the city's riffraff to the ends of the earth. Among those who fled is Thrad the Immortal, one of the Master's greatest warriors. He is defected to the Troll Warren, where he has rapidly risen in the first ranks. These reinforcements will give the Troll Warren a powerful tool against the Washington Brotherhood, who has already overextended ex oppressing its neighbors. Well, this seems like a Brotherhood's problem. He goes and joins them, and then adds Trolling Your Neighbor, which grants... Uh, Attack and defense bonus against the Washington Brotherhood, the Morrow Drinkers, the Rib Breakers. They gain one research slot, and they also add technologies, Masters New Army, support equipment, uh, squad automatic weapons, maintenance companies, and battle file. Patrolling New Reno for the first time in the Enclave's history of reclaiming an American city. However, New Reno's population does not yet see it this way. While some are hopeful that the gangsters are being pushed out, others fear that the distrust of the power armor strangers patrolling their streets. Minor actors of resistance, such as throwing rocks or insults, are not uncommon as unsavory types test the limits of our troops' patience. If we appear weak, small arm fire may soon follow. Teach them not to mess with the Enclave. Gain 10% war support. Add the following resistance target at negative 15%. Uh, resistance activity chance negative 25 percent lose five percent legitimacy or establish strict rules of engagement return fire only an unpopular move but do we want to be power armored at monsters responding with plasma rifles to kid throwing rocks uh add new reno as the following resistance target plus 10 percent compliance speed plus 15 percent uh resistance activity chance plus 10 percent gain five percent legitimacy uh gain negative 4.9 percent war support and war support lost based on the popularity of the elites. Yeah, we'll establish strict rules of engagement. But with that, we're going to end episode one of our Enclave playthrough. I hope you guys have enjoyed, and I'll see you all in the next one. Bye.